Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 23 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to learn about session logging in copy activity of Azure Data Factory pipeline. So let's see everything in details. So when you are trying to copy data from some source to sync using copy activity in Azure Data Factory pipelines, we have a capability to enable logging. That means we have the capability to capture the logs of that particular session of copy activity execution. Okay, so this is what is called as session logging capability. So by using this enable logging option, we can log the metadata such as what is the file name that is getting copied. Okay, and at what time the file reading has been started from the source, at what time the file has been written into the sync, if there is any file that has been skipped, what is the reason of the file getting skipped, all these details will be logged into a file in the ADLS account. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So session logging capability enables us to log the copied file names and other details related to the file using enable logging option in copy activity. Okay. It also ensures that the data is copied successfully from source to destination, as well as it also validates that the consistency is maintained between source and sync. Okay. So this is how the output of the session logging file will look like. Okay. So it captures the timestamp at which any operation is getting started or any operation has finished. Okay. All the timestamp will be captured. It also captures the logging label. Okay. We will see everything in details also. Okay. So basically we have two kinds of logging label. One is info and other one is warning. We will understand the difference between the two. Then we have this operation name, which means what operation has been performed on the file. Okay. Whether the file is getting read or the file is getting skipped or the file, file is getting written to the sync, all these operations are getting logged. And it also logs the file name that is getting copied. Okay. Under this column called operation item. And then we have the message which holds the complete information related to that operation. Okay. So for example, this particular file is getting read. So it starts to read the file, which has this last modified name. This uh, is the item type. This is the size of the file. All the details is captured under the, under the message column. Okay. Similarly, if the file is getting skipped, then what is the reason because of which it is getting skipped? Okay, so it captures the whole details. For example, it says sample1.csv is changed by other clients during the copy activity run. So this is the reason why it got skipped. Okay, so on similar notes, it will capture the details of all the files that is getting copied using the same copy activity. Okay, so here you can see it is for uh, sample2.csv as well. This is another file which is getting read from the source at this particular timestamp and it started uh, writing to the sync at this timestamp and then it finished reading at this particular time and then completed its writing at this time. Okay. So all the information regarding each and every operation has been logged into this file with the help of session logging capability. Okay. And the file that is getting generated is of a static schema. Okay. That means uh, we cannot change any of the columns or we cannot add or delete any column from this output file that is getting logged using this session logging capability. So this is the schema of the file that gets generated. It has all these columns as we have mentioned here. Okay. So timestamp, uh, logging label, operation name, operation item and message. We cannot change the schema of this file as we do not have any control over it. Okay. So let's go to the ADF portal and let's try to create a pipeline to see everything in practical. Okay. So what we will be doing is we will try to copy some files from this Anu demo container. So we have these many files where we have different formats of the files. As you can see, we have few CSV files, we have few JSON files and we have uh, XLSX file as well. Okay. So we will try to copy only CSV file from this Anu demo container to a new demo output container, okay, which does not have any file currently, okay. So using pipeline, we will be doing that. So let's try to create ADF pipeline. Let me try to drag copy activity into the pipeline canvas. And let's try to create the source data set pointing to a new demo container. Since we are going to copy only CSV files, so I'm selecting CSV format. And let me point to the uh, container that is a new demo. And I'm not going to import any schema. 
and in this thing let me create another data set pointing to a new demo output container okay so i just selected that container no need to import schema and in order to copy all the files either we can loop through uh, each of the files using for each or we can simply use this wildcard file path okay we have already talked about this option in details in our previous video so please go through each and every video in sequence order to understand it better so here i just need to mention the wildcard pattern so since we need to copy all the csv files so i am going to give it as star.csv okay so it will load all the csv files from a new demo container to a new demo output container using this single copy activity okay now what we are going to do is in the settings we have this option called enable logging where we can log all the copied files skipped files and skipped rows okay so let me select this and here we have couple of options as you can see we have to give the link service that is pointing to our adls account okay so once i uh, selected that it has popped up few more options so the first option is logging label okay so we have two options here as you can see first one is warning and second one is info let's understand what are these two let me go to the next slide so if you select info in the logging label it will try to log all the copied files skipped files and skipped rows information okay so basically it will log all the information related to all the operations that the copy activity is performing okay but if we select the warning logging level then it will only log skipped files information and skipped rows information that means the warning logging level will not capture the details related to the files that are successfully getting copied between source to sync okay so it will only copy the warning related information so in our case i am going to select info so that it will uh, log all the details related to each and every operation and then we have to select the logging mode where we have two options one is reliable and the other one is best effort so let's understand the difference between these two as well so in case of reliable mode the copy activity will actually flush log immediately once each file is copied to the destination which means as soon as one file get copied to the sync then it will log the details regarding that file similarly if the next file is getting copied then it will log the details regarding this file okay so it means it will log the details one by one for each of the files okay so using reliable mode it will ensure that each of the details are captured successfully without any miss okay so that's why it is called reliable but the downside of this is that it will actually perform double write operation one to the sync data set and another one to the session log file so because of that it will take much more time and the throughput will be impacted so the next option is the best effort mode which will actually log the details in batches okay so suppose once 10 files got copied it will log the details regarding the same into the session log file similarly the next set of files will be copied then it will log the details regarding the same into the session log file so this will make sure that the throughput won't be impacted and it will uh, take comparatively less time but because of the batch processing it will not actually guarantee the completeness and it might be possible that it will uh, miss some of the details okay so if you have less number of records to be copied you can go for reliable mode and if you have millions of records that needs to be copied then i would suggest you to go for best effort mode so that it will take less time for session logging okay so let's go back to the pipeline and here i have selected info in the logging label so that we can capture each and every operation details and in the logging mode we can select any of these let me select reliable and here in the folder path we need to provide the folder in which you want to uh, generate the session logging file okay if you leave it blank then adf will create the default folder for you okay so let me give a name uh, for the folder as session log so currently i do not have any folder called session log so it should generate this folder and within that it should generate the file which has all the logging details okay so let me hit on debug and let's see if the session logging folder gets generated as well as we will see that demo output container will have all the csv files 
prompt this unknown demo container. Okay. So let's wait for this execution to be completed. Yeah. So copy activity has successfully completed its execution. Let's go back and let me hit on refresh. So now if I scroll down, you can see there is some folder called session log, which has created just now. And we are expecting in demo output container, we should see all the CSV file. As you can see, these are all the CSV files from a new demo container. Okay. And if I go to session log folder, so you can see ADF has generated this subfolder called copy activity hyphen logs. Okay. So inside that we have copy data one and inside that there is some subfolder with auto generated GUID name. And inside that we have the file which is in the .txt format. If I open that, let's try to edit. So we cannot see the data here. Let's download it and let me open now. So now you can see we have all the details of the copy activity for multiple files that are copied. Okay. So you can see we have timestamp, label, operation name, operation item and message. So as you can see, this file holds the details of all the files that is copied using the copy activity. Okay. So it has details of multiple files and you can see the timestamp at which this operation has been started, which means file reading has been started. So you can see the message here. It starts to read this file at this particular timestamp and it has all the details or the metadata regarding that file. Similarly, it starts to read the second file at this particular time. So similarly, till this point, all the information is regarding the file reading. Okay. As you can see here, and then it captures the information regarding file writing. So here it says it starts to write these files. Okay. And then it's, it completes the reading of these files and it completes the writing of these files. So each and every operation is captured within the single file with the help of session logging. So you can actually do proper analysis if there is something which is not expected during the copy activity execution. So suppose you are trying to copy some file from one storage to another and uh, you have found that there is some unexpected file in the destination data store. Then you can actually see this session logging file from where that file is coming if the source does not hold it. So you can actually uh, find the root cause using the message and uh, you can try to fix your configuration in the ADF. If there is some miss in the configuration, for example, in the wildcard file path, you have missed star dot CSV instead of that. If you only give star, it tries to copy JSON file as well, which is unexpected. Then you can go ahead and fix that. So session logging is really helpful when you are dealing with production data as well. Okay. So let's go back to the slide. So basically you can find your session logging file under this path. So this is the endpoint for your block storage. And here it is the log file path, which we have set in the copy activity configuration. So in our case, we have given this file path name as session log, right? Let me go back. So here you can see the container which is getting created is called session log because in our case, we have given the name for this folder path as session log. So this is the same here uh, what we see log file path and then uh, ADF by default creates uh, this subfolder which is copy activity log and under that it will create these uh, copy activity run ID then auto generated with then the file will be in dot txt format. So the log file that will be generated will be in dot txt extension and the data will be in CSV format. So we have seen the same here under session log it generates this uh, folder path called uh, copy activity logs and under that it generates these widths dot uh, txt file okay and the data is in csv format as we have seen so let's move ahead so basically you can always go to this session logging file and you can see each and every details and additionally what you can do is you can load this whole data into a sql table and you can you can write some sql query for example you can get the details of all the files that is copied successfully using this SQL query to give all the operation item where the message is like file is successfully copied. Okay. So it will give all the files that is successfully copied to the same. Similarly, you can uh, check the file that is skipped using this SQL query where operation name is equal to file skip. Okay. And similarly, you can get the file name which has taken the longest time to get copied. Okay. So you can see top one operation ID where the copy duration 
is the most okay so that's it for this video guys we have seen how to use session logging capability to capture each and every details regarding the operation performed by the copy activity so if you like the content please hit on like button and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet thank you